Hello and welcome back everybody as we're getting ready for game five of this best of five series. And I think a lot of us just learned there's apparently a Silver Strikes, uh, Silver Strikes long, long loop. I uh, wasn't aware of that one, but I'm happy that we all got to learn together and I'm happy that we're going the distance in this one. I would not have been satisfied with a sweep either way. And now we finally get to see a fearless best of five go the distance. And that means that there are 40 champs already banned for the entire game. Nobody is allowed to Ooh. play so many things. Neither side can play Xin Zhao. Neither side can play Ari. Neither side can play Redekton. And the list goes on. It is a tough position for both of these teams as you have to start digging deep to see what it is you can still play. Yeah. We said at the beginning that Maryville should be favored in a best of five fearless, especially if we end up getting to this point because of how many different characters they can play. We've seen so much resiliency and the one character I'm still expecting to see come out for at least one side this time, Varus. Right? We have seen Unless it's so banned. many. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. That's the thing about this. The champions are so pinched. We're going to have to go so deep into these champ pools. And that is why Fearless Draft is so exciting. I mean, what do you even do if you're a coach <laughs> at this point? And you're trying to sit your players down like, okay, we got to keep track of all the things we can't play, all the things they can't play. And then also on top of that, add the layer of what we don't want them to play that they still could play. And what we want to prioritize that we can still play that maybe they don't know we can play. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot going Eddie. on here. There is so much, and this is why one of the things about Fearless that I think is kind of cool is it just prioritizes being good at League of Legends, right? Like, you know, if you, yeah. you know, imagine we had a best of seven, and we had another twenty champions oh band, where it's just like, well, I don't know. I guess we're playing pre rework. We change finals format. Is it too late? <laughs> Whipley, maybe Whipley. Mark Z. I don't know who we got to talk about with that. That would be very yeah. We'll fun, get though. we'll get Trindamir on this one himself to say, hey, we need some help down here. But either way, with all of these champs banned, the things that are still available, Maryville can still play the Oriana. Maryville can still play the Smolder. Maryville still has access to the Vi. There's a lot wow, of champions that's... that are still available Ooh. for Maryville in this game five. Whereas I feel as though DSG have used up almost everything that their top half yeah. the map wants to play. I'm happy you highlight that because I was going to ask you that next. Like, what are the big power picks available for either team? Maryville's got a list of them, man. That's actually insane that they still have all of those priority picks. If you had said any of those are a blue one, maybe not Vi, but like the other ones are options, right? If you want to prioritize them. And <sighs> DSG, it feels like their pools have been getting pinched heavily. Not only from the, the Fearless bands that you see on your screen right now, but the strategy that MU have had in the second round of bands, that's where it really gets brutal, right? Yeah, you see the first three champs locked in, you know, okay, well, they still need a jungler. Maybe they can flex this champion here or there. Let's just isolate the one person we know hasn't picked something and then take away two more of their champions. And it's just been really tough for DSG. They leaned on the Rek side top lane it was fun to see it won lane but it did not win that game so they're yeah. gonna have to find something else in the tank for dsg top laner and for really everybody it honestly makes me think that we're going to see something crazy coming up from tenacity right he did hover the fiora last game it's a champion True. that has largely disappeared from the meta but it's also the kind of thing that you know Tenacity is going to be very good at. It's also things yeah. like the Ore. There's clearly champions that everybody can play, but it's not the top side of uh, the map I'm necessarily worried about. It's not Tenacity that I'm really worried about. I start asking, what does Young still play from this position? What can Young play that is one safe to blind that he's going to have to play into Spyrax? <sighs> Okay, so it's not the Nico, Oriana, Ari, or the Talia. We know that those are not on the table for Young anymore. And when we look at Spyrax, there are still things like the Akali that we know he leans on to. I mean, that's a Young special too. True. Could be that. Aurelia. We know that Young has played a lot of the melee champions. Even Silas was something he leaned on to into last year. Yeah, LeBlanc. There we, okay, there we go. There, there we are able still to champions. piece together a couple. I'm not, I'm not worried about his ability to play any of these champions. I'm worried about him having to blind pick any of these champions. <laughs> that, that's the tough yeah. part, right? And as we start going towards the end of it, I mean, the Callista, which has been a permanent ban coming through for Disguise, going into Maryville, still must remain banned. The Gragas all sneaking away from Tenacity, still banned. And <laughs> the Draven ban comes through, and Maryville yeah. has to answer the question, do we want to let Minui play Varus. 
I, I think you should just ban it. It's a smart thing to do. If you leave that up, that's a clear choice. Because you're not going to get the... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I was going to say, Orianna's on the table for Maryville, but so is Varus. Yeah, it would be DSG. You lock it into Varus because they can't take the Orianna either way. But it's oh. Aatrox banned instead. Interesting. I think this has right. to be a Varus pick coming through. You did not ban the Orianna, so you should expect yep. that is going to be one of the first picks here for Maryville. Still an incredibly powerful character and a very safe blind pick at that. So it creates a lot of pressure on this guy's draft to try and find a way through it. And instead, it is the Sivir pick coming oh, through. Oh, okay. So... They're opting for an earlier pick for Scary Jerry. We already have the Callista and the Draven band away. You can't play the Senna Jinx, Zeri, or Lucian. Just lock something in right now before <laughs> TSG have a chance to ban out two more champions. Orianna's still available. They still have the Vi, but they don't have to lock the Vi in early because DSG cannot pick it themselves. Yeah. But I do fully expect a Vi pick here for Maryville to round out the first three. And the LeBlanc hover coming through. I mean, Young has to make some very crucial yeah. decisions. And... I mean, we talked about the champions. I almost feel like the Akali might be stronger here, but it is going to be a LeBlanc comes through. This has been a classic pick for Young. We've also seen what can happen with this character back and forth. Romer had a gr most of a great game recently on this character as well. And as Perry reaches deep into the pockets, the answer is mm. the Jarvan. Not the Volley Bear, which is what I had expected to see here, but J4... Maybe a little uh, earlier that you can start to influence some of these lanes and is a very powerful combo with the LeBlanc. They can both set each other up for their CCs um, and try and punish this Orianna yeah. potentially. It also happens to match up well into the Sivir, right? You can still spell yeah. shield the E, but it's nearly impossible to spell shield the Q. You have a very small window. It is possible. It's just very tough. And Cataclysm locks you in regardless. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. But as a poppy comes through here for UG, mm. or potentially for Niles as well, you have a lot of dashes to stop on the yeah. side of Disguise, and you are creating a very powerful backline for Maryville to play with. However, one of the things that they are losing is the ability to dictate what engagements happen, because Young and Perry should not be playing on the same side of a fight almost ever, and as we start digging back in, the Udyr ban taken away from Tenacity is something that we have basically seen disappear from the top lane meta. Yeah, it was played in their last series. I believe it was, it might have been Niles that had pulled it out. I don't remember offhand. Uh, we can look at that in a second here. But I love that they're holding the Poppy right now because it could be jungle, it could be top like you said. And if Tenacity hovers Fiora, maybe they think Niles can just play the Poppy and just try and be a wall for Fiora to not be able to push through. Um, has a decent matchup in that from my understanding of how that top lane works. But we'll see because the options uh, just give Maryville so much more power in this game at number five. Cyan as well taken away, so trying to deny tank options from Tenacity. Interesting. I mean, if there's a tank that Tenacity's going to play, I always think of Orn, right? The classic. Yeah. Something that took him a while to build up as a character, because he was always a carry player when he first came onto the scene, and then it was 100 Thieves were like, dude, you, you gotta play this character as a Pantheon band. Sorry, no pretzel for you today, Kingus. Man, hey, at least they give respect to it, though. I'll take a ban at this point. Oh, but it's Kennen blind picked. Interesting. I'm trying to think of what Tenacity would play Rumble? that interacts well. Rumble is okay. It does make me think like Irelia. Ooh. Tenacity does like that champion. Could go for something with more range though. So there's Jace locked in. This We're still expecting that's going to be LeBlanc in the mid lane, although I suppose yeah. maybe there's a crazy world where they reverse those around, but all expectation is tenacity on this J stop lane. I also wonder if this Jarvan is flexible, right? Is it something that Poom can play? It does well in the bottom lane, and that could give a big option here for Perry to try and find something, but no, it is going to be the Renata coming through on the yeah. side of Disguised. They have some tools, they have a lot of poke, they have a lot of range to play with. They can dictate when engagements happen unless Niles can find good flanks, and I, I want to see a Nocturne here. I think Nocturne wins the game basically Ooh. on the spot. For the yeah, roster. Jace cannot play a side lane into a Nocturne. Even LeBlanc could struggle. So, but no, it's the Poppy it's in not, the jungle, yeah. not in the support role. So they go for the Ash instead, as it is still available for them. DSG had played it earlier. Maryville had not. And we see, I mean, look at the difference in this draft compared to game one, game two, even game three. Like, we are going deep into champ pools here to try and put together strategies. And I am loving what Fearless Draft has done to the league, has done to the NACL, and has forced these players to adapt to 
very, very different play styles that we're going to have to see come out from both of these teams now. And as I look at it, there is so much, so much focus on individual play, right? There are so many tools. There's not very strong front lines, a lot of range champions yeah. on both sides of the map. And that just means a small mispositioning mistake can instantly end the game one way or another. And I feel as though when it comes down to it, I like Maryville's chances, right? They have been more consistent with the way that they have positioned during these team fights. They have a better understanding of how to control the sides of a fight than Disguised have so far. And as we go into our last game of the day, winner will move on to play Team Liquid tomorrow, whereas the loser will have their spring season end here. ESB open for revenge against CLC and another dance. And a finals appearance for Young and the organization. Maryville University looking to make the deepest run they have ever made and continue making that run, proving they are, in fact, the best ever collegiate squad. Game five, it all comes down to this. We can see this might be the most back and forth we've seen these votes go. Disguised Maryville back and forth. It shifts, it goes to 50-50. It shifts again, we're back to 50-50 in Maryville. Finally, seem to pull ahead. That means that the Patreon subscribers aren't coming through, guys. We need the support here right now. <laughs> yeah, they're barely ahead right now, but like you said, it is very close. I think there's a lot of Maryville supporters out there still. And look, I see it this way. If you want the narrative of the return to finals, if you want PSG to make back-to-back, -back, you're obviously cheering on them. But if you want the collegiate representative... The argument that Collegiate is a viable path to pro to ring true. You're rooting for Maryville right now because we know players like Scary Jerry and Zyko are hoping for LCS and using Maryville University as their path to get there. Very conflicting motivations, and I think we're seeing that in Twitch chat right now. And it is so close still, but as we go into the rest of this game... We have to remember how volatile all of these lanes are. If you start seeing a weed come through for the Ash and the Sivir, you buy enough time to scale into the game. If you see Jace start building a lead here up against Niles, you also buy time for Jace to become an immense force later on with the amount of poke. We've seen what can happen when LeBlanc builds a lead. Every single one of these lanes matter, and that puts a lot of pressure on the junglers to decide where they want to hedge their bets. I'm happy we're hope they're focusing on the mid lane so far. Feels like this has been such a pivotal matchup throughout this best of five series. They're duking it out. Top lanes duking it out. And it seems like all these players, sometimes in the game five, you see slow gameplay. Nobody really taking risky oh. plays. But right now, it's a flash forward from Niles. First blood to Maryville stop laner. Our third all pro top laner constantly saying it's not about him making this game about him. And Young needs to be careful as well as Yuji's waiting in the wings. But such a powerful start and a statement coming through from Niles. This guy said in an interview earlier this weekend, hey, I'm the worst player on my team. I'm just trying to set everybody up. Tenacity was bodying him in the first three games, in the first half of last game. What a turnaround for Niles getting that first blood in the 1v1. And still. Outlander scrapping as well, though. Scary Jerry's low on mana and it popped the ghost. Lots of summoner spells straight back and forth. Tenacity trying to return the favor. Niles up here all alone, no flash available from earlier, and that's a flash knockout from Perry. Nicely done right there, showing off some of his J4 mechanics. It's an important kill to get right on back coming through from Disguise, but it's still worth noting that Niles still has an experience advantage and an item advantage because when he died, he had money to spend. Tenacity did not, so this can still be a big win coming through for the Maryville top side of the map, and their bottom side is also creating so much pressure from Yuji. Doesn't seem like he's done with play around this top side. He wants to make sure that Tenacity needs to respect the power that Niles has. I think a correct read from Yuji. Let's get another look at this. Because it's Tenacity kind of taken... Oh, no, this is the second play. So this is yeah. after the 1v1 here. Needed well, backup, but hey, it does get Tenacity a kill. And it feels really bad because as Tenacity goes for this play, he ends up losing several minions to the turret off of all of that. And now Niles has re asserted control over the top lane wave and also this bottom side Minui and Bloom are losing control of the lane even though Yuji has to give up a couple of camps in order to make sure that his lanes are doing well 
That's fine. It's Poppy. You you already know what this champion is going to be doing. Disguised seem to have already lost the thread, and it's cool. only a couple minutes into the game. Tenacity's back is stopped, but Parry's and it's frozen. did not. So Niles is able to keep Tenacity in this lane, locked and loaded. And actually, no, I, is that a frozen top lane? Actually, could, it is. Uh, Observer Kai, can we take a look at top lane? I think it's frozen. It's super frozen. Tenacity needs to get this back oh, off, no. and it's not a lot of combat stats coming through. This lead for Niles should grow, and Kennen in this game, he doesn't necessarily present the most threat to Young or Parry, but he presents so much threat to Manui later on in the game. Mm -hmm. And Yuji, just now, because of how powerful his top lane is, is going to have the freedom to start up these grubs. Niles really being a difference maker for Maryville University right now. I will say, though, I think a big wild card for DSG to play with is Poom on the Renata Glass. We haven't talked about it yet, but the hostile takeover, the handshake, two very powerful tools to prevent a Kennen from flanking, from finding that engage onto the team. Oh, no. And Niles doesn't really have great tools to stop that, but speaking of tools, he's got great tools to go in. Slicing Maelstrom early. Tenacity still level five. We'll have to get the knockback out of Niles. Ooh, that final Q doesn't go through, so Niles doesn't actually get the kill. Nasty is just fine. But still, the way that Niles played that was fantastic. Getting the stun first before positioning himself, whereas if Tenacity ever hit him with a Thundering Flow, he'd just go right in the wall. He wouldn't move. Tenacity would still take the full duration. Young getting a good trade. Flash out of Spyrax. Parry's there. But Spyrax got to the safety of the turret, so good from Young to set that up and get the summoner spell out of his lane opponent. Spyrax still alive, though. Yeah, Zyko uh -oh. might not be, though. Ooh, Zyko's in trouble. Has to pop the barrier. Flash is available. He's trying to get as much damage down as he can, but Manui will claim the kill. DSG winning out in the 2v2. A huge swing back coming through from Disguise as well. This was how they were able to find some wins. The Scary Jerry pops the ghost. Ghost popped again. He's got the flash. He's got lethal tempo stacked up. Spell shields, the hail of arrows, <gasps> and that Q did so much damage. Oh, but the barrier early from Manui, plus the heal. They take the 1v1. Yuji oh, still looking wait, around. What? He just stopped. Interesting move from Yuji right there. Not going to go on to Poom, but either way, what a close series of plays. Top lane, things are getting rough for Niles. He flashes away, doesn't have Slicing Maelstrom, and oh, Tenacity goes it. down. They don't have the damage. And Perry just has to walk away. Niles with the outplay. This game is so close, Kangas. Everybody everywhere is fighting. They know how much this matters to both teams, and they are not willing to back down. The fact that Scary Jerry in this next fight just goes right back on in after tagging all of these plays is just a testament to how much confidence you have to be playing with as the Sivir. He knows he will outscale the bars later on, which means that as he oh, tags oh, this, oh. if that Q doesn't land twice, Scary Jerry backs away, but the heal bait comes through and it ends up being a trade as this melee mini, yep. I think, is the last hit. I think Manui actually could have lived if he had barriered a second later. He went very early on it, but let's look at the... How does Niall survive this? He just flashes the EQ, and at that point, Tenacity just doesn't have well, enough damage. Parry. The turret does too much, and yeah. for whatever reason, Parry was not tanking. It was Tenacity from the beginning, and that's a dragon going over to Maryville. They also got the three grubs earlier, so even though the gold is dead even, they are still controlling the neutral objectives. What a game five, everybody. Strap in, because I doubt it's going to slow down from this position. These teams both really want that chance to make a run for the live finals. A reminder, that will be April 1st. You can buy your tickets now. And FlyQuest Challengers already booked their tickets. It's going to be TLC waiting in the lower finals, watching this series, seeing what is our competitor's form going to look like. And right now, both of these teams came here to scrap. And we have to remember the legacy of these two teams is so, so different. You start you start looking at how they did last year, right? Disguise the defending champions. Maryville went out and effectively last. They lost both their round one and round two matchups and got eliminated very quickly from the double elimination. And then you look at where these players have come from, right? Tenacity and Poom, both LCS players previously, as well as Niles Spyrex. You know, he had a couple appearances as well, but overall, these two rosters, one is from an influencer and one from a college. Right now, Collegiate is taking more. They have flashed out of tenacity. Yuji coming up here for a gank. And Niles is going to force his lane opponent out. And look at this freeze yet again coming through. Niles has had so much control. The dive from Perry just trying to break things up. And Perry, it's he has Poom. 
Yeah, Yuji is here though with Steadfast Presence not yet used. Boom not going to be enough to get a kill onto Yuji. He'll just go back up to the top camp, says, I am not bothered. Perry using the E to check it out, but not going to contest. But the Grubs are up, so Perry hoping to deny the 5 or 6 stack from Marigold. I got to say, that spawn was kind of gross. That's actually my first time I've ever watched the Grub spawn. Oh, I wasn't really paying attention. Did they do something weird? They're like eggs. Oh. Yeah, I'd never seen that before. But either way, Maryville, will they try and contest this? They only need to get one of them. No, they don't. It doesn't matter. It's way too late at this point. The skies will get three as the arrow comes through. Ooh. Doesn't land onto anything, but still, it is a back and forth game. The gold is in 100 between them. Two and a half minutes until the next dragon actually spawns. And it does. Why oh, are we trying why, this again? Why do we have to do this? Okay, see, it's just so kinda, there's multiple uh, eggs. There's a lot of them. Oh, yeah, now I see it. Yeah, it's just like, you know, in general, you know, you got the hands instead of the feet, and you got the eggs coming through. It's just like all around, like, you know, I respect it. It's like looking at Death Guard stuff. It's meant to look gross, and they did a good job with it, but still, ugh. Either way. Shout out to the five people in the audience. Yeah, hell yeah. Reference. Hell yeah, you were one of them. <laughs> I'm not in the audience, Josh. I'm, You're my they audience They gave me a well. mic, which I know I'm still shocked about, too. Yeah. But either way, with all of this going through, I still want to shout out Young, right? Because every yeah. single time, it feels as though we are kind of underestimating him. We've talked about it several times when he played up against Ryoma. Ryoma is coming off of a fantastic end of the split, and Young dismantled him in finals. Now, Spyrex, again, who was the second All-Pro and arguably should have been playing LCS this split, still in a position where Young is able to hang with him during all this laning phase as Spyrox takes every opportunity to be aggressive. Hasn't gotten a sizable lead over Young in this pivotal game five though. So props to Young on the LeBlanc champion that we were talking about. He is known for, has been able to hold it down in laning phase four right oh. now. Perry gets hit by the Ash arrow nice. and is just surrounded by Maryville University. And yeah, that's that's a rough time to go down. I mean, there's no big objectives, but still you're just giving gold over to your opponent. I have to say my heart goes out to Perry throughout the course of these playoffs. As a player who we had such high hopes for, this playoffs has not been his best showing. That kind of play has happened nice. way too often. Flash forward with the slicing Maelstrom. No flash available for Tenacity, but he's fine. Yeah, still all right. Tenacity, though, slowly losing out on gold on EXP. And Niles should be able to pick up a plate here. With the dragon spawning in 40 seconds, every bit of gold will matter. Every ultimate available will make a big difference. And Minui already has his first item completed. So does Scary Jerry, but one of these is way more impactful. And Zyko, he had the Enchanted Chris Arrow to pick off Parry there, get some more gold in their pocket. It's going to be back off cooldown by the time we're actually fighting at this dragon. So Maryville University still have tools available to them. DSG are currently rotating their early 15 seconds for this to spawn. Young trying to play Assassin LeBlanc here. Big oh. damage onto Spyrax. Parry doesn't full commit, though. I think they probably could have killed Spyrax, but Flash was available, so maybe not. Yeah, honestly, I really like that from Parry, right? Not making the same kind of mistake, but... Irex had just teleported back, and this gives Disguised the opportunity to decide how they play around this. And Yuji, nowhere close. Normally, this is where you start looking at plays on the top side, but Tenacity has already gone for a reset. Not possible to die of him just quite yet. You only get a Gromp in exchange. And Niles is also going for a reset here. So Gromp picked up by Yuji, but they're not going to stick around for a prolonged wait. And a hover to punish Tenacity as he gets back into lane. So well played by DSG. Young setting it all up. He was the reason they got the big chunk on the Spyrax. And he's going back in on the Spyrax right now. Chain lands. Now goes Perry over the top. Gets flash out of Spyrax. But here comes Yuji. Headbutt oh, the arrow. the wall. Knocked him up with the ultimate. And he's arrow hit Young. He's got no oh. backup. Set fast presence from Yuji trying to keep Spyrax alive. But he can't get either. DSG make it out alive! How do DSG come out of that ahead? Everything that UG was doing seemed so perfect in that last fight and none of it mattered. Watch also that during this play, Enchanted Crystal Arrow stuns Young for the full two and a half seconds. As soon as Perry goes in, I think, oh, he's probably dead again because yeah. of the amount of pressure. And Young can't participate. This is just UG wailing and even with the steadfast presence catching Young to stop Spyrax oh, from going down right away. Oh. Perry still shields himself the triumph comes through and disguise come out on top of it and that flag and drag was 
that had to have been pixel perfect at the end of Steadfast Presence. He could have gotten knocked up and gone down. Yuji was one auto attack away from killing him, but DSG walk away alive, walk away with some more gold in their pocket, and now they're back onto the map looking at the Herald. And Maryville looking to potentially try and contest this. All members, Scary Jerry is committing towards the bottom side of the map as Tenacity is still pushing that lane out, but Yuji says, it is time to fight. We still have four members here, but the thing is, Tenacity can join fast. Minui's joined up already. And with the Varus poke, it seems like MU are not willing to walk up and contest. This is a Herald secured for DSG. One dragon apiece, three grubs per side. No turrets taken. This is the first difference in neutral objectives that we have seen overall. As the skies, they will walk away with the Herald. And with this mid lane turret already so low, they can drop it whenever they want in order to pick that objective up as well. And I really like what DSG are doing with their lane assignments. They got Tenacity out of this lane. Get the Jace away from the cannon. Put Young in there instead. Arrow lands, though, on the Poom. Support for DSG in a lot of trouble. Nice. Flashes away with Hostile Takeover, but Scary Jerry at the Spell Shield. Ghost chasing down Poom. Ooh. Handshake almost keeps him alive, but there's nobody to kill. So Scary Jerry picks up the credit. Really good stuff from Poom. Almost lives, but Scary Jerry knows it is not enough. Takes him down and down. Maryville looking for Tenacity. Tenacity pushed up the wave all the way, and Niall said, where were you going, buddy? What, you didn't like our 1v1 happening? How about a 3v1 as they surround DSG's top laner and pick up another kill? Zyko, I mean, he's up flashing defensively because he knows he could have gone down, but still, that is another kill as Maryville starting to pull ahead a little bit in this game. But Perry coming down, nothing seems to be going unanswered. Teleport will not come through, and Maryville yeah. finally finding a little bit of something. But, a little bit surprised, right? I feel as though Disguised in previous games would have just dropped the Rift Herald mid, said, yeah, we are going to punish you for sending so many people down to the bottom side of the map, but Disguised will get nothing in return for that. And that's what they were doing so well earlier in the series, is always trading up or even at the very minimum against Maryville University. But this time around, it feels like Maryville have, I mean, clearly found their stride as they are on the precipice of a reverse sweep. Still too, way too early to call in this game in particular. But DSG just have not been able to hold the line like they were in the first two games. And you got to start looking at some of the veteran members. Players like Young, he just won the championship in summer. Players like Tenacity had LCS stage time. And no, you know, Slouch on his own right for championship runs back in his days before he was even called NACL back in the academy days. ESG, they're going to need these more veteran voices to step up here, as well as the firepower from some of the younger players to step up. Yeah. It's fascinating too, right? You look at the players who are the more veterans. Tenacity, we know, is a talker, but Perry is also a talker. It's good damage down onto Ooh. Niles. That really makes it difficult for him to try and find these plays around this upcoming dragon. Yeah. He's not teleport either. I mean, right as I say it, Young makes it happen. This guy has made back-to-back -back LeBlanc plays. First the chunk onto Spyrax in the mid lane. Now the chunk there onto Niles, who doesn't have teleport. Dragon's up in 28 seconds, so Niles should be able to get into the, uh, the neighborhood in time but won't be there at the start of the setup. So Young is doing a fantastic job in this LeBlanc, finding these little windows, finding these little pockets to chunk out important members at pivotal moments. And turrets are falling across the map. The mid lane goes down, the bottom lane goes down. Tenacity, we didn't talk about this, but he also got Spyrex's ult in an all-in in the top side of the map. And so suddenly, nice, I like this. The fast this is awesome. rotations coming through. Oh, it's even gonna make impact! Let's go. Tenacity in trouble, though. The Ash Arrow will land, so MU say will give the Dragon, guarantee the kill. Spyrax tanks up the turret, surprisingly, but does not go down. MU will find a kill. Objective to DSG. Disguise picked up two structures, and now the Rift down in the bottom lane will, you know, get a little bit more money for Perry last hitting some of these minions. But still, the game remains so incredibly close between these two rosters. The picks that we have seen, the plays back and forth, I gotta say, at this point, if I am a Maryville fan, right, we've talked a lot about Spyrex and Niles and Scary Jerry, but a player that has seemingly gone untalked about weirdly enough today, my vote for the most valuable prospect in UG has not had the best series. But on this Poppy, he's done some immaculate things, and he's also one of the players who will need to control a lot of these front lines. He will need to start playing in a lot of these flanks. And that is something that we have seen him do so often before, but it might not matter. Here comes Sparks Perry. 
Spyrex has flash, we'll have to use it again. Barry just throws out the Cataclysm to guarantee it. This guy is doing a really good job. You just take out all the support pieces and Maryville bringing people back up, but it's too late for them to do much. And I mean, you're singing the praises of Yuji in this game in particular. Yes, had a, yes. a pretty quiet series so far across the board. But I want to talk about the side of DSG here because Young, again, is just keeping DSG in this. Whenever it feels like Maryville are getting a little momentum, he's just making out uh, wanky for him, you know? Making it wonky. How are they supposed to approach <laughs> this LeBlanc? That's the wrong thing right there. Yeah, you know. We got it. We got it. Still, yeah. it is still a very impressive run coming through from Young. And I don't think we get to Game 5 if we don't have all players on both teams playing well. Right? It is one of those situations where, because of how much talent we still have in the Challengers League, you need everybody firing on all cylinders to find this win. And so far, I mean, I guess the biggest surprise for us has continued to be Niles, actually doing well. He's not a player that we were necessarily looking at to be the difference maker, but Tenacity has kind of evaded a lot of problems since the landing phase. And this chase is also going to scale. He's already built uh, enough magic resist as well that he can lane into either the Orianna or the Ken. And I still think you'd rather have it into that Orianna just because there's less chance of you getting chased down and dying again. Especially when these Ash arrows are just oh. sniping people oh. left and right. But speaking of tenacity, he gets headbutted into the wall by UG. Enchanted Crystal Arrow does go wide there. He's fine. Doesn't need to flash anything. Now, one going topside, though. Young and Niles, the carry Kill. from each team. The ones with the gold duking it out, and Niles gets the better of the 1v1. And the veterans are standing tall here for Maryville. Four and one now on this cannon. Finds the kill, but here's an ult. Okay, Yuji can be in trouble. That's a great set pass presence as teleports come in. Maryville can regroup, redraw the battle lines, and now engage onto Tenacity. The slows come through. Ghost from Scary Jerry. He's unleashing the damage. Flash out from Tenacity as now Spyrex has joined in. Shockwave available. Not going to use it just quite yet, but they stun up oh. Boom into the wall. Shockwave used now. Boom's going to go down. Spyrex gets the kill credit, and DSG just lost their support for nothing. And Maryville are standing tall. They have everybody still left on the map. Niles is hitting the top lane structure, and all of the turrets that Disguise had picked up moments ago are now going to be equalized by Maryville. You can already see the vision control on the top half of the map is starting to balloon for both sides. Everybody wants to know what's going on, but as this play comes through onto Yuji, a good steadfast presence keeps him alive, but the teleport from Tenacity is instantly punished by the opposite side. Scary Jerry runs him down, and Perry and Poom cannot participate until it's too late. Yuji just waits for the right moment. Boom. Hiding behind everybody else. Poom did not want to walk that direction. I can tell you that right now. Or at least wanted to flash a little bit earlier. DSG losing their support now means that there was more map control for MU, but they weren't able to go for the Baron just quite yet. So very early for this comp to look at something like that. So instead we're setting up for the Dragon a minute ahead of time. MU controlled the river for now, but DSG pushed them out. These guys have a lot of tools, right? They have a lot of control over when fights start. It is mostly on Zyko for Maryville to actually go for any engages. But there's Bell Shield starting to come through. The Nui already has one. Young is very mobile. Poom going to just stop any engage in its tracks. And Maryville, they're going to be looking for a lot of these tools where they're going to be flanking, which has been their specialty. And as the dragon gets ready to spawn in 30 seconds, Maryville still look to make take control of the mid lane wave. They want Niles approaching from bottom side while everybody else approaches from top. You have to imagine an Ash arrow can cause chaos, Shockwave can cause chaos, and then the flanking cannon can clean everything up. There's the arrow early though. Hits Tenacity and nobody else, and everyone's still fine from DSG, so they won't have the Ash cooldown as the dragon spawns. They were trying to make the play before the objective was up. Yeah, it's about a minute cooldown at this oh, point. Oh, Young? Banshee's available for Niles, means that he's a little safer. They are already starting to come off. I mean, you get to see how much threat Tenacity has on these games, especially because there's not a real front line coming out from the side of Maryville. Yuji's the closest that we have to it, but they will trade a Dragon here for the mid lane turret. Tenacity will try and wave clear that and already pushes Zyko off. Ooh, Hustle Takeover splits members there, Spyrax! Got caught out from everyone else at MU, has to flash to safety and will do so. Very precarious position. DSG, we're ready to pull the trigger. 
this game just remains so so close. Even there is a even though there's a gold lead here for Maryville, they should not feel comfortable with the lead that they have. They don't have total control over everything. And we're seeing the movement back and forth from both of these two teams. Honestly, Kangas, this is the kind of game five that I always look for is both teams always looking to try and make plays, but it has slowed down quite a bit as they have become much more willing to just trade objectives on the map. Yeah, remember how this game started? Everybody just taking their gloves off and smacking each other. <laughs> we're kind of past that point. Now we're in the mid to late game stage where both of these teams realize the gravity of the situation they find themselves in. One team fight loss means probably Baron, means probably series, means probably season. As another enchanted crystal arrow comes out, that one snipes boom directly on target. Yuji's here, not headbutting him into the wall. Trying to get him back into the team. Boom will go down. That's the pick that MU needed. That's huge. Uh oh. oh. Wait a minute. We're going back in. I don't know if that's what everyone oh, no. else wanted. Young in a lot of trouble here. Teleport coming through. He's trying to escape. Now the slice email trip from Niles, but he actually goes too far. Niles is about to go down. Manui picks up the kill. Can DSG get out now? They have two members alive. They killed Niles, who's got the most gold, but MU still have four strong. They're onto the Baron. Tenacity's poke is immense. So is Manui's. They can do a lot yeah. of damage for range. And they take the Baron very slow. We're only 25 minutes in. Oriana and Sivir, they can do damage, but they're also oh. taking a lot of damage. Just flash from Zyko. Tenacity is trying his best with the Shock Blast. These arrows are hitting everybody. And MU, they still won it. They're madmen. They're tenacious. They are not backing down from the poke. And they'll get the Rally Cry Baron. They lose Scary Jerry, but they walk away with the Baron buff. And that is ridiculous. We get to take another look at this last replay. Psycho throwing it out. And you got to feel for Poom. This does not feel like it's supposed to be a mistake. But it was a little bit too far forward. Did not have the vision control. And as Poom does die, Chaos erupts as Young says, Oh, I can uh -huh. kill all these full HP members, but no, he cannot. And Young tries to put on some fancy feet, but it pulls Niles directly into the rest of his team. There's a lot of damage that goes through, but at the end of it, it is still a position where three members of Disguise have died for only Niles on the opposite side, and they are able to convert it to that Baron. What a series of plays. MU with the Baron buff now. Can they close it out? We said how impactful this moment was going to be. And Maryville make their moment count. Baron buff can get you a massive lead. They're already 3,000 ahead as the Dragon Soul fight is coming up in two minutes. If they can turn this into like a 5,000 gold lead, they're going to be happy. More gold in their pockets means that there's a much higher chance of winning that fight then and preventing DSG from getting an Infernal Soul Things like Varus, things like Jace, things like LeBlanc, a lot of poke and pick potential. Suddenly a little less scary. Ooh. Another arrow goes out. This one hits Manui, but he had the uh, spell shield available. Flash from Poom very early, preventing Yuji from knocking him in, but Perry does not have the same to be said. Flash was available. He didn't use it, and he'll go down. Young, I don't think he got spotted, so he could have a big flank here. And Manui also with the ultimate. Oh, does Young know? Niles is going to spot him out here. Young does get away. Slicey Maelstrom and Rockabell from Niles. He really wanted to find that pick. Yeah, I would have gotten them more structures as well as Yuji. Gonna be in trouble. Mana Corruption use. He has the Keeper's Verdict, and there we go. There you go, keeps himself alive. And this is the full core press coming out from Maribel. The top lane, inner turret. The bottom lane, inner turret, all under threat. That's a lot of money going over to Maryville in a briefcase untaxed, but still with a Baron or a Dragon spawning in 45 seconds, Maryville they are setting up. You said how important this Infernal Soul was going to be. Maryville will be there first. They will clear out the vision, and Disguise should come in. And it's so tough to come back in with this composition. You just have to yeet parry into the enemy team. But, but, yes, she currently are here first. They're using their teleports to cheat tempo, get back onto the map early, and do not allow Maryville the privilege of walking in and just establishing free vision control. 20 seconds, still Dragon. Spyrax is backing and still needs to teleport. We see them teleporting to the top side, so Maryville, it looks like they're going to take a more traditional front-to-back fight here. Nui's got to be very careful. He's got the spell shield available. Niles is here with Flash and Slicey Maelstrom available. This cannon is going to be pivotal for this fight. Yeah, watch the arrow from Psycho. That is their only real engage tool as the dragon is started off here by Disguise. Niles is marked by Tenacity. Tenacity is going to try and keep Niles away. Zyko has the arrow available. There it goes. Completely whiffs. 
That's huge for DSG. They don't have to worry about the Ash anymore. Tenacity still in the 1v1 against Niles. If we focus down the Dragon, this could be big. Niles has no engage for MU now. And DSG, they're just using up all the cooldowns from the opposing team. It's really just Shockwave available for Spyro to this point. And there it is. Used on the Poom. Does take him down. He will not bail himself out. And they get the Dragon. MU just bullied DSG off of the objective. Crazy. Tenacity not able to get enough poke down before the fight actually starts. And Niles chunks him down. And Maryville with a dragon with control of the mid lane. Also take down Plume. They're going to get more even after the Rally Cry Baron buff has disappeared. This feels as though Maryville playing such a calm, collected game is going to be coming out on top on this one. As this guy is just not able to find the engages that they need. Yeah, it, it felt rough. It felt like, watch here, Tenacity is marking Niles. If everyone from DSG just hits the dragon, great. But what's their comp actually good at? Poking enemy champions down. They don't necessarily have crazy DPS on this thing. And you can see, even though Tenacity buys so much time for them, they just can't get the objective. Yeah, and even though they throw out the ultimate from Manui, they aren't able to kill Yuji either. Young gets forced out of the play and as the aggression comes through from Yuji, he knocks away the enemy jungler. They're able to find Plume, and crucially, Perry cannot get back in time to the dragon to even attempt a smite steal. And now 6,000 gold lead for Maryville University and a reverse sweep on the horizon. They have scaled, they have earned the lead that they find in their pocket right now, and denying the dragon's soul means that this Baron in a minute and 10 seconds will be the next magnet for action. And looking at the gold right here, a lot of leads for Niles in the top lane. Even Zyko in the support position is going to be doing decent damage here. DSG going to be praying for a miracle, but the Saints are on the other team. MU hoping to close this series out right here. And the Saints were marching, but we'll see if they can continue doing that right now as Maryville. It, it feels as though they have control of the entire game. And Maryville has been a team that a lot of their wins have ended in like 25 minutes. This is one of the longer games, and the longer the game goes, the more likely it is that something wild will happen. Young still has tools. Kanasi is still scaling. He has three items completed. He will do so much damage, and the longer that Maryville just stands up and pokes back and forth, the worse their next fight will be. That's why Disguise is grouping up as a unit, making sure that they can take control wherever they go as the arrow finds Manui. Yeah. Gets out of there, though. Had the spell shield. And watch for Niles on the flank here. The cannon's approaching from the bottom side. But everyone from DSG are retreating backwards. They are not playing into MU. So that is two ultimates used. Scary Jerry will not have on the hunt to speed up everybody else. I also want to point out, right, that wasn't actually the spell shield. That was Poom with the Mikhail's Blessing. Because Ooh. Maryville only has one button to get things started, it becomes very easy for people to move forward to Spyrex, takes a huge chunk of damage. But because Poom can always just stand next to Manu or stand next to Tenacity, the players that are really at risk of dying to the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, it makes it so difficult for Maryville to actually find these fights in disguise. They're, they're just going to start pulling. This? This is on full vision right now. They're pulling the teleport out and now back off. Okay, that's, teleport. I think the smartest move they can do. Get teleports out of the opposition and then reset these waves because they did not have control of those side lanes. Yeah, Tenacity, it's a very tough position because the Jace is a strong split pusher, but very vulnerable to just getting all in by the Poppy as well as the Cannon. So, just prevent the split pushing coming through from Niles. He is nowhere near as vulnerable as the members of Disguise are in these side lanes, and it does create a lot of issues. But the one player who I think can create these opportunities is Young. He is so focused on trying to kill. There you go. It's all about priority at this Baron right now. Seems like the calm before the storm. A minute until Dragon as well. So either way, we're going to have another team fight happen in the next minute. Maryville wanted to be at the Baron. I think that makes sense. Prevent the potential of a smite steal and then a big swing to the opponent. They're not actually going to pull the trigger on the Baron. Keep in mind, they are in the driver's seat. They have the 6,000 gold lead. They have the non-committal engage. They just haven't been able to land it yet. But as soon as that arrow lands from Zyko, that is the go button. We also have to look at... If we start looking at all of these opportunities for smite fights, Harry has not had a good record this last couple True. of series. And now Maryville is going to be pulling on the Baron themselves. Niles has a fantastic flanking position. 
Can Perry get in there? Young as well. Watch for Niles here, like you said. The cannons come to the line. Flash with a slicing maelstrom. Gets on to Manui. Varus is going to go down. The bailout is not in time. Boom's got to flash away. And DSG just crumbled. Maryville with the flank from the top lane. Coach, they'll take down the defending champion in Young. And they will win the team fight against DSG. And what does Maryville get from it? They are saying, no, we aren't going for the Baron. Okay, they've decided, they've changed their minds. They are going for the Baron. But Maryville, this has been their bread and butter. They have done this for seasons and seasons. Niles finds this massive, massive flank, and this time they dogpile on Manui. They weren't able to do it earlier when Spyrex tried to find him, but there is plenty of tools for Yuji to follow up on, and even though he survives for a lot longer than he maybe should have, it just matters that they finally get him. The lines for disguise have been broken, and Maryville are oh. marching on. But well, that's a soul. Like alive. That's Dragon Soul. Perry got it. I think he just flashed in and smite stole. I see flash and cooldown. Maybe he smited it away. Either way, hopefully we can get a replay of that. I mean, they, they get the dragon. So DSG, they're still in this. They lose Baron. They're down gold. But Dragon Soul is a difference maker. That's massive. It sounds like we might get a replay of it, but still Maryville. And so it is a very tough position right now. Disguise, they need that. That is one of the things that they need to do is activate other win conditions. And Disguise... They just got on it. Yeah, they just get it. Ooh, interesting cue. And then he has to flash the wall in order to make sure he does not die. You cannot afford to yep. die when your opponent has Baron this late in the game. So with the Rally Cry Baron buff, Maryville are looking to try and end the game. They're 8,000 gold up, but this Infernal Soul will be doing a lot of damage to them every time they do not get engaged to work. When we talk about moments in a series, that is what we talk about. Maryville, they win the fight, they get the Baron, but the decision from DSG finding their moment to get that Dragon Soul keeps their hopes alive. It's not over until it's over, and DSG are not giving up. They're poking and prodding, and Young, I mean, he can jump over this wall and get a lot of damage down as the vision control comes through, though. It is easier and easier to deal with any of the poke that comes through from Disguise, and now Maryville, they're moving up. They clear out these waves very, very quickly, but this is the only wave that they are playing with. The top lane wave is not going to be there for a long time. Nobody's moving with the mid lane wave. Focus landing, Niles takes a huge chunk of damage from Young over the wall. LeBlanc is incredible at moments like that. Now Chain of Corruption onto Yuji. He's got a limp away. Hostile takeover hits Scary Jerry, but he had the spell shield available. Handshake will not land. Shockwave on the Poom. Oh, 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 they got him! Spyrax gets the kill. Poom goes down. Can Maryville win the game off of that? It's a 5v4, but they have very low health bars. Niles has the teleport as well. He's going into the mid lane to try pushing that. But Spyrex has every ultimate except for Niles in that last fight. Can Maryville continue to push even with these cannon minions that can't even get them in range? No. it's. I think the push is over for MU for right now. DSG get a little moment to breathe. Niles is mid lane pushing that wave in. So now DSG are going to have to catch two waves. The siege will continue after a brief respite. But it buys time for Poom to come back online. So the game is not over for DSG. And they're even pushing Niles away. Ash arrow goes in but goes a little wide. If DSG find a window here, I mean, MU are still low. Yuji, still low. A teleport. Has no ultimate. It's about to come off cooldown. It's now young. it is. Teleport comes in from Young. We're trying to corral MU. This could be the series defining play from DSG, but they don't commit to it. They can't quite find it. That is Maryville. They open up the base at the very least. That means that the next play is a bit easier. But Kangas, we have three minutes, and this does not happen very often. The Baron yeah. and the Elder Dragon are spawning at the same time. You cannot do one before the other. You have to pick one and commit to it. And a trade is really scary for Maryville. If they go for the Baron and their opponents pick up the Elder Dragon, it's very tough for you to win the fight. If you go for the Elder Dragon and your opponents get the Baron, how do you push the waves? It is so difficult for Maryville to end this game because they don't have the redundancy in any of their plays. They have to bait Disguise into the wrong place, and Disguise has to take the bait. DSG were on match point after game two. Maryville! fought and clawed their way back to this game five, but none of that matters. It's an 8,000 gold lead for Maryville. It's Dragon Soul to DSG, and it all comes down to this next fight.
Elder Dragon versus Baron in two minutes time. Seems like both of the teams are going to play a very patient next two minutes. Not looking for anything crazy here as there is no more siege potential for Maryville University, but a reminder that this is the season on the line for both of these teams. If they win, they have to mentally reset and go into another best of five tomorrow against TLC. Winner of that going to the live finals on April 1st at the Riot Games Arena. This means so much to all the players that you see on your screen right now, and you have to imagine that's weighing on their hearts in this moment. And this is why they need your support. We need to see everybody in Twitch chat cheering on these guys. This is where you need to charge it to the game for the Skies fans and all the Maryville fans. I don't know what your cheers are, but this is definitely the spot where you go, need go to... Go Go Saints? I go Go Saints? like that. I don't know. There's I have no a way idea, to do it. actually, but I'm, I'm just guessing right I'm here. Sure, I'm sure there's a song. Every college has one. But either way, Maryville, we need to see that support. We need to see Disguise support come through at the same time as everybody gets ready. We have 50 seconds Perry. until everything comes through. And Perry, we cannot don't have it force. be this. No! Don't have it no! be this! Shockwaved, hit by the Enchanted Chris Lero, flashes to safety. He's alive. He's alive. That would have been a tragic way for the series to end, but the fact he can reset and get back on the map before the dragon and the baron spawn keeps CSG in this. My heart can't take it. My heart cannot take seeing it happen to Perry again. But look at the vision control that Maryville have across the board. It is completely dark out mm -hmm. here for the members of Disguise, and Niles has a teleport available, and oh, there is a ward in the bottom lane brushes. If they do want oh. to play for the Elder Dragon, you can also, this is one of the best plays that you can make. Whatever your opponents are setting up and you don't want them to, you charge into the mid lane, you take down any destruction, oh, and that's Arrow Lens! They got Tenacity! He's got to flash away. Can he escape? Scary Jerry chasing down. He no! got him! Scary Jerry shuts down the top laner for DSG. That's going to be the inhibitor, but the dragon spawned. Are, I think DSG are on it. No, they're no, not. No, they're not. Niles was hovering, so he was keeping them off of the objective. This is massive for Maryville. They can't afford to be doing the Elder Dragon because Maryville would have ended the game, and now they have to play this without their top laner. It's a 5v4. Can Gun, can you stand tall and try and make Baron. your way back? They're, they're, they're pinging Baron. Young is going to look for maybe a bit of poke, try and get a miracle steal. He's dead! And he just dies for it! Oh, disaster for DSG. They cannot go for the Baron. They were pinging it thinking maybe we can get there in time, but it's lethality, Varus. You're not going to burn that thing down. Maryville can march Arrow? her in right here, right now. Arrow lands on the boom. The teleport comes through. Slice and Maelstrom from Niles. This is it. This is their moment. Saints with their backs against the wall. They needed a miracle, and their prayers are answered. Maryville University with the reverse sweep will take the series against DSG and keep their playoff dreams alive. Maryville did it. Maryville is going on. They were pushed to the very brink, and that game was so tough. Every single time they were trying to find an arrow, we always had Poom there with the Mikhails, but he wasn't there for Tenacity, and he couldn't be there for oh, himself. At the very end, Maryville reverse sweeps their way through, and oh my god, were these games so much fun. And what a story, <sighs> Josh, for Maryville University. They come in as one of the teams we expected to dominate. They get upset in that round one against DSG. And they have to make the lower bracket run, getting revenge in a five-game series, reverse sweeping, and their job's not done. They still have TLC in their sights for tomorrow's best of five series. I cannot believe what these players are having to go through just this weekend alone. But with that said, we're going to send it to a short break to hear from one of the players afterwards with our post-series interview. You won't want to miss it. We'll be right back after this. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro.
Hello and welcome back everybody for our post-series interview with the victorious top laner, self-proclaimed worst player on the team, <laughs> yet still able to perform at that level. We got Niles joining us here and I gotta let you know, Niles, we talked a lot in that last series about moments, key moments, pivotal moments, stressful moments. Walk me through the final moments of that game from you and the team's perspective. Well, when Elder and Baron were both coming up, right, uh, mid prio was king, and you saw this, uh, we had Vision and their bot try, uh, and as we saw them enter through bot lane to try and contest Elder, I was screaming, run down mid, run down mid, threaten end, threaten end, threaten end, and you saw that we were more coordinated than they were in that situation, right? I was ready to stop their backs if they went to Elder, uh, Tenacity was trying to defend, which I think is the right idea. I think you have to get the mid wave. I don't think entering through bot is like a viable play, in my opinion. And so those are the final moments where we're just like, like, yeah, just like threaten to run down mid, get the pick, go Elder. And then, yeah, basically once we got the Elder Dragon, um, even though, even before LeBlanc died, we were like, just hit the smite and it's GG. So yeah, it was really, it was really insane. It was really crazy. That's awesome to hear. Now, we also got to talk about the fact that if you are the worst player on your team, it <laughs> sounds like you found a couple of angles to not only get third All-Pro overall, which I'd love to hear what your thoughts on that are, and also, you took Tenacity to task. You sounded like you had some bands set up that you made good on a promise. Yeah, a um, lot of respect for Tenacity. I think he's a really great player. I think one thing that um, I noticed personally throughout the split is that he, he was really priming a select three champions, Aatrox, Renekton, and Gragas. And so going into the series, I told the guys, okay, give him Renekton game one. And uh, after that, or Renekton early on in the series, and after that, if we target ban him, like I promise you guys, I will be more useful than he is. Like I, I, will, ta I will top gap. Mm -hmm. And I made, uh, I made that promise to the boys. And we, we stuck up, we stuck with it throughout the series, permanent banning Gragas. And uh, I think he's really good on Gragas, right? The last time they beat us in the upper bracket, it was off of his Gragas. The Gragas was really good. Yeah. And so I made the promise to the boys. Game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, he, he really smurfed. And so I, t I told the guys, like, I I'll I'll top gap. Just give me these bands. And so I, I think in the final game, I was able to show that. That's awesome to hear. Well, I know it's been a long weekend already for you, Niall, so we're not going to take up too much of your time because I'm sure that you and the team want to rest and talk about that last series in preparation for your series going forward. What's the mentality like for the team? Can we get some insight into how everyone's doing? How's the energy holding up? How's the spirit holding up? Because you got one more best of five series ahead of you tomorrow. Look for the Twitter that Twitter post that Maryville Esports is going to put out for our pop off at the end of game five. That's the, that's what the energy's like. If we can win this series, okay. I told you guys we can win any series. We can win any series. Like we can win it all. You know, a reverse sweep. That means that you are a tenacious, mentally resilient team, and so we, we're going to dig deep. Um, just like, well, I just want to say like, a lot of respect to Disguised. I think the the ability for them to level up over these past couple of weeks and really put it together and be a formidable team, I think a lot of respect to those guys. Like, um, in a different world, they easily take the series, right? So um, nothing but respect for those guys. Yeah. All right, we got one question coming from the fans. I'm trying to interpret oh. it. It's from Scowy Jerry. <laughs> Ask him about the shot call when they got the soul. Ask Ooh. them about the shot call when they got the soul. I don't know if he has like extra insight. If that's game five, then you, I, uh, I believe Scary five. Jerry was hitting Baron and Yuji and you were running to Dragon and then oh. Harry got the Dragon Flash over the wall. Yeah. Jerry, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It was, it was my bad. It was my bad in the shot call. They, sh they should have never gotten soul. We should have prowled Dragon before Baron. Shout out to Jerry. <laughs> I, I, always told, I always told Jerry. Yeah, now I understand. I always told Jerry after the game hits 30 minutes, just listen to my voice, right? He listened to my voice. Ooh. It was the wrong call. So I own up. I own up, Pat Jerry. Jerry, you were on this one, that's baby. Fair. All right? I own, I own up to it. I'll be better. I'll be better next time. All right, I'll be better. That's good. It was a long night for all of you. But with that said, we're going to let you get some rest and get ready you. for your best of five series against CLC tomorrow. Thank you so much, Captain Thank American you. Niles, for coming out and chatting with us. And best of luck going into your prep. See ya. All right. A toast to Disguised, everybody. Yeah. They are bowing out with their heads held high. A reverse sweep is how their playoff run ends. But I do want to give shout outs, as Niles was giving shout outs to those players as well. They were also tenacious in that series, and they tried their absolute hardest, making a much deeper run in playoffs than we had given them credit for. Yeah, I, I, 
I'm very impressed with both of these two rosters, right? Disguise went very far, and unfortunately, we won't be able to see them defend their uh, reigning championship. But I also want to give a yeah. quick shout out to Niles there at the very end, right? When you're a captain of a team, you get all the credit, but you also have to take all the responsibility. And just seeing how quick this team is able to do that, both recognize when they've done well and understand their own mistakes, means that this team is destined for greatness. But we are not done like we've been alluding to. We have another series for them coming up tomorrow. A best of three into a best of five into another best of five. Maryville are playing the gauntlet in order to try and get a rematch up against FlyQuest Challengers. Absolutely bonkers schedule for the Maryville team when you look at what they've had to go through. Their series against Fear even being delayed and having to play. And then now in this best of five, another best of five tomorrow. And I, I just love what we've seen as well throughout all of our best of fives with Fearless Draft. Josh, I'm going to keep going back to that because it was the coolest change we had going into this year. And I got to say it's been delivering, especially when we hit these five game series because... I mean, Niles, they clearly had a strategy. I was like, how are you a coach here? Niles, the player coach, had a strat of how they were supposed to approach that one. I'm very curious what TLC's strategy is going to be. Yeah, and we have an important reminder. Tomorrow, we are not starting after LCS. We are going to be True. starting at 1 p.m. Pacific. So make sure you get everything set up. There's no daylight saving times to worry about. But if you come in when we normally come in after LCS, you are going to be late. You're only going to see the second half of the series at best. So make sure you tune in at the right time. This has been mm -hmm. a fantastic series. I thought it was going to be a fast 3-0 for Disguise, and we got to see all of the glory. Also, reminder, buy your finals tickets now, April 1st. They're selling out quick, so if you want to come cheer on the NACL players live at the Riot Games Arena, make sure you purchase those tickets. It's not an April Fool's prank, everybody. Just happens to be the day that we have live finals happening, but we might have some fun jokes for you on the day itself. Thanks so much, Josh, for coming out and casting an incredible series with me. Thank you for the producers behind the scenes for keeping all the gears rolling and those players for putting on that performance. We'll be back tomorrow with the final lower bracket series ahead of that live finals. And we'll see you there.